Hi there. It's Sarah of Get Weaving. I'm in my shed again. It's jolly cold outside, so I've got lots of layers on. I'm going to be going through how to thread a mixed warp this time using lots of different yarns. I have a great big assortment of <laughs> yarns. This is like several fine ones wound together. I've got cones of fine cotton ribbon. I've got some chenille. Most of them haven't got any labels. The ones that I did have, I've kept. But um, a lot of them are odd bins or a <laughs> guild sales table. So not much hope there. So what I've done as usual is a little thing like this. I've done wraps for each one. I've weighed each one because I like to keep a note of how much I've got if I need to get anything else. I've also started my project sheet. That's here. Um, I'll put a photograph in. It's quite useful. It's what loom I'm using. It's going to be the 20 inch Ashford Knitters loom. I'm making some hand towels. Weirdly, I've never made any before now. I've done all sorts of other things, but this Christmas I thought I really like a Christmassy hand towel, hence red, green, white, and so forth. So I went through all my yarns and dug out all the ones that I thought would look nice together. So these are a kind of chunky cotton. A lot of them are knitting yarns. <laughs> Usual random assortment. <laughs> so they're all cotton. Um, the warps, well, it's a right old mix. As I said, there's some chenille, all sorts of things. So what I do is um, a stretch test. I cut a meter off of each one and then I stretch it and if it stays roughly a meter or goes up to one meter ten then I know it'll be safe to use if on the other hand it stretches up to say one meter thirty I probably wouldn't use it because it would set up all right, it would thread all right, it would wind on and obviously the tension would be different and then when the weaving comes off those yarns that had stretched will ping back so you get a nice kind of seersuckery sort of effect. Um, so I always do a stretch test with these yarns and obviously the usual thing wraps per inch. This lot came up between 12 and 15 so I'm going to set it at 7.5 uh, one of them this is lots of fine yarns that were wound together I'll put next to a finer one which is the, this one so I'll sort of surround if there are any that are slightly thick, thicker um, what I do is I spread them evenly across the width of the loom it's going to be just random stripes and then the weft is either going to be uh, this it's cotton with a bit of polyester in it, I think, a sort of textury thing. Or it's going to be this, which is another cotton ribbon. I've weighed everything out and I've got plenty of both. Um, just to be on the safe side, I also wound one warp and one weft together. and then counted just the warps and it came up at seven so i think 7.5 would be fine they're going to be not chunky exactly but thick enough thicker than the tea towel i thought they might quite nice hand towels so what i did was work out i measured a towel that i've got that's down this side here they each finished measure 16 inches by 27 inches so i'm putting them on in one long piece and i've got an inch gap in between each one so that when I'm weaving, I'll put a strip of cardboard in between. I'll show you that. Um, the main thing with this being a random warp is that both edges are the same so that the tension doesn't go wobbly on one side or the other. 
Um, they should be pretty good. They're cotton. They'll be washable. I always add an extra bit on. So I add on 10% to the width. So my 16 inches uh, to allow for drawing becomes a 17 and a half inch wide warp. And the length is going to be the length of four tea towels. Sorry, tea towels. <laughs> four hand towels plus a gap in between plus 10% plus 20 inch loom waist. The 10% is the uh, take up. So my warp ends up being 17 and a half inches by 142, which I should be able to measure out in here. I might have to use my warping frame as well. The warp will be random stripes, as I said, but not too wide, because if the tension is at all different, a wide stripe is going to be perhaps problematic. So maybe pairs or two pairs. And what I do, I'll do photographs of this when I've got the loom set up, is I thread all of one colour, usually the one I've got least of. So that is spread all across. Then I'll start filling in and again I'll do photographs of this. Now at the moment some of the yarns are wound into balls. Some of them are on cones. Um, some of them are balls like this around the cardboard tube. What I'm going to do is wind them all off on my ball winder so that they are all a ball like this and then I can take the yarn from the centre and then when I'm winding my warp the tension will be the same on all of them. If I try winding a warp from this, this is going to be rolling around all over the floor which will affect the tension. These aren't quite so bad as long as they don't topple over but my preferred method is to wind everything off on the ball winder so that they're all like this coming from the centre. I've obviously weighed everything first um, what I'll do is I'll put on my project sheet what I got at the start. I'm not going to weigh them individually, just the whole lot. And then I'll weigh them when I've wound my warp so I know roughly how much it used. It's always handy um, if I'm starting the same sort of thing again. So what I'm going to do now is set the loom up and I'll photograph bits as I go along. What I'm wearing today is this. It's T003 in the days when I had red hair. <laughs> um, it's woven sideways. So I must have woven it on quite a wide loom because the fabric needs to be 24 inches wide for my size. I did have a very old German rigid heddle loom that was 32 inches wide. I'm pretty sure I made it on that, but it's quite old now. Just looking at the date for this. Anyway, um, but I found it too cumbersome, 32 inches wide. But that's what this is like. It's really simple. goes over the head. It's just got a seam here. It was a comfortable. And then this is my boomerang scarf, which was from the Ashford Wheel magazine. And that's what that looked like. So this is um, some hand spun wool. Really, really cosy. And this is the Wheel magazine by Ashford. I think this is going to be the last printed version. They're all going online after this. And I'm very honoured because I have a dress in here, which Elizabeth Ashford very kindly chose as one of her favourite projects. So that's DR005. So this magazine, I think they've been going since, yeah, there we are, since 1987. So this is going to be the last physical one, which is a shame because I love getting this magazine, but I'll still look at it online. And projects from the last however many years that is. I love reading this anyway. So, yeah, very chuffed to be in here. And this is just brilliant. It's so simple. Garter stitch. Just a long bit. So this was some sock yarn or something, I think. But it's really cosy. Good for the drafts <laughs> and it's cold today
Right, well, this is sort of the whole kit. I've got the loom um, at the end of the table. So this is the Ashford, Ashford 20 inch knitters loom. It's got the 7.5 read on. I mark the center and I've marked the width, uh, 17 and a half inches. If you're a beginner, just bear in mind that with the knitters loom, these hooks show that this is the back. It's a blooming nuisance if you thread this up back to front. <laughs> um, okay, pegs. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using that or if I'm going to be using the walking frame. I'll measure that in a minute. Threading hook. This does holes and slots. I keep these random bits of ties. They're really useful. Clamps I'll be putting on in a minute. Um, sheets of paper numbered. This is number one. So when I wind onto the back roller, I'm going to wind the warp on with layers of paper in between so that the tension is nice and even. Um, I've also got one piece which I generally now put on at the front because that covers the knots. My yarns are wound off into balls now. I've got lots of this and lots of this. So I've just wound a couple for the moment. Everything else is wound off into a ball. I've got all the weights here that I started with and the ones that were on cones I've written here including cone. So I've kept the empty cones as well. The cardboard tubes I don't need because I know how much is on these. It's 50 grams each ball. So I've taken account of all that. Um, that's my ball winder. And I'm just going to measure out 142 inches. And if the table isn't long enough, then I'll get my walking frame out. Okay, all set up. Now, this is the back of the loom, and you can see it's clamped to the table. And then I always tie the back stick to the heddle, stops it wobbling around when I'm threading up. Just a useful tip. Uh, I measured with a tape measure, wasn't quite long enough, even if I went as far as the shelf up here. So, what I have is pre measured pieces of string. So this one is 150 inches and what I'm going to do is take it from the back of the loom through the heddle down the table and round the pegs on the warping board and then I'll go backwards and forwards and as this is 150 inches it, it's fine I needed 142 for the warp but it's always quite handy to have a spare bit because then I can try out the different wefts. As I said, it's either going to be this one, which is a lovely cotton ribbon from eBay, or it's going to be this one. So I've got enough extra to just try a little tiny bit first. And then I'll choose which one I'm going to use for the weft. The weft is all going to be plain. It's all going to be the same. So I've taken the pre-measured string, it's uh, around the back stick, through the heddle, all the way down, all the way down, and then round the warping frame, round those two end pegs and back to here. So I know from the back of the loom round to this last peg is 150 inches. I like using these measured pieces of string because I know there's no mistake. There'd be nothing worse than having it, I don't know, 10 inches too short or something. That'd be very annoying. Now I'm going to start threading up from the back with my threading hook. And as I said earlier, I always put in the ones that I have least of first. So that's probably going to be a little bit of this, then probably a little bit of that. I haven't got much of either of those two, but I'm not sure how far they'll go. As I said, they had no labels on. Um, always have the same ones at the edges so i think because i have a lot of them i'm going to use one of these two at the edges maybe the red would be nice so i'm going to put those in in a minute but as i said i'm going to start winding the one that i have least of uh decisions right this one there's not a great deal of this so i'm going to start with this one first and i'll show you what it looks like once i've got it in place so this is the first one done. As I said, it was this multi 
stranded one. Um, this was lots of thin strands I'd wound together earlier, left over from a previous project. And I didn't have that much, so I spread them fairly unevenly. Um, so there's only four pairs. I, what I do is I thread one pair and then move along. I don't tie, cut it off and tie knots. When I've come to the end of the weaving, I'll show you how to get around that. So basically, through the heddle with the hook, with my threading hook, down, round the pair of pegs, round to the end peg, and then back again. And back again. So that was the first pair, and then moved on to the second pair and so forth. And I've only managed to get four pairs out of that. I know there wasn't very much. And I haven't put them on the edges. You can see they're just randomly threaded in. And then I can start filling in with some of the others. I've done a couple more colours, including the red. I'll spread it out fairly evenly. And I decided I was going to have the cream on the edges instead. So two doubles on one side and two doubles on the other side. Because if I'm weaving with cream, I thought it might make the edges look a bit neater. I'm going to do this green one next. Again, this is a multi-strand one. Very fine yarns that I wouldn't have been using for anything else. And they are lightly twisted together. Because otherwise, when you come to thread the holes, it's very difficult to tell which pairs are which. So, wound into a ball, it's going on the floor. I've got it tied on here. I've also taken off the, um, the bit that I tie the back stick to the heddle to because I don't need that anymore. It's nice. I'm enjoying it. The colours are random but sort of evenly spread out. So I'm going to do this green next and then see what I feel like. Rather nice. Um, when I say lightly twisted yarns, I've got one of these. It's the same people, Japanese, that make the um, ball winder. But it's got an extra arm on it. Um, and... Yeah, so you've got a few extra bits in there. And it just puts a really light twist into your yarns. So I've done this loads of times before now. I've got quite a few that I've done like this. And it just puts a tiny bit of a twist in. Obviously, you could also do this on your spinning wheel. But you've got to do it with very, very little twist if you possibly can. So this one I did on my spinning wheel and it's got quite a bit more twist in it. It still wants to turn back on itself. I got this one at Wonderwall Wales a few years ago. Um, I think it's quite old, probably 1960s or something. If you can never get hold of one though, they're ever so useful. So there's not that much space left. If people wonder, well, about choosing the colours, I just look at it. I don't count when it's a random weft anyway, which is what I usually do. Just look at it and think, oh, I could do with a bit of green there or a bit of red there. I haven't got any wide stripes of any one colour because I don't really want any of them to jump out. So what I've got left is a few gaps. I've just got to decide what to put in there. I have still got one or two I haven't used yet. This is um, a cotton chenille. This is, again, a kind of multi-strand. So do I want more green or do I want more cream? Now, the weft is going to be cream. So I think I might put a bit more green in. Hmm. <laughs> Good fun. Okay, it's all threaded up. I'm pleased with this. That's what the back looks like. A bit of a mess. As I said, I'm going to be putting a stick in between. Uh, the upper and the lower through the shed in other words once I've threaded it all up and but I can't do that until I get to get to the end really it's going to be wound onto this back roller next this one here 
Um, so that's what it looks like all the way down around the warping pegs and onto the end peg. I was hoping to actually use up a lot of these yarns. I've had them for so long, I've got a fair bit left. So what I'll do is weigh what I've got left, including the cones, because I included those in the first place. And then I'll know exactly how much this warp weighed, because obviously I can't weigh it now. And I, I don't particularly want to weigh the loom and then weigh the warp. It all gets a bit complicated. So anyway, I'm pleased with this. Now I'm going to put some choke ties on in a minute. That's what these little bits are for. It's always handy to have these cut. So I'm going to put one here, one here, one here, and a loop through the end here. Now, my friend Elizabeth leaves the whole thing under tension. Instead of taking this end loop off, what she does, and I've tried myself and I like now, is actually unclamps her loom. And as she winds the warp on, walks the loom towards the leg which is really good if i can film myself doing that i will do what i need to start doing is um i've got the sheets of paper ready they're going to go onto the back as this winds on what i'll do is i'll take some photographs as i go so far if i hadn't been nattering and filming and what have you um and making cups of tea <laughs> this would have taken about an hour not bad. I've taken the measuring string out. So I unhooked it from the last peg and then wound it back through because I don't want to wind this in with my warp. So that's can go on one side. Also, I've taken the clamp off the loom, put everything back in, in the bag. It's horrible losing bits of kit at this sort of time. There's the choke ties in place. And as I said, I've unclamped the loom. And then what I'm going to do is start winding backwards. Now you can see this loom is still flat at the moment. The knitter's loom does twist up. So that's about one turn. And then I stop. And then I'm going to slide a piece of paper in. Because if I keep winding around here, the tension's going to go all over the place. I'll put a piece of paper in and then I'll show you what it looks like. I should have said right at the beginning, if you're not using the whole width of your loom, make sure it's centred in your heddle. So I've got one, two, three on that side and I've got one, two, three empty ones on that side. So don't be tempted to put a narrow width just on one side. Always have it centred. So you can see I've started winding in with paper. And the loom is slowly working its way towards the peg. Excuse me, this is a bit awkward with one hand. Make sure it locks every so often. So that's the first piece of paper in. And you can see what's happening is that these all sit nicely around the roller. They're lock not all locked all over each other. The tension's not going really weird. You do need to clear the decks a bit doing this. So I'm winding, winding, winding. And when I get to the end of the first piece, I'll thread in piece number two, which I've got ready here. They're all numbered. <laughs> that one's numbered on the other end, but never mind. Um, and it's really handy to have these. I know some people use wallpaper or corrugated paper or sticks, but because sometimes I've done a warp nearly 400 inches long, I find that this on the back roller would get far too fat. So I find this is just poster paper, art poster paper, and it's lovely. I used to use newspaper, but it gets really, really tatty and tears after a while. And I've used this, well, I'd say hundreds of times, <laughs> that's probably not far off. So I'm going to keep going, put in sheet number two. I'm going to remove the first choke tie and I'm just slowly going to walk towards that peg. When I can't move any further and it's right close, I'll take a photo. So all the while I've been walking the loom up towards the warping frame. I can't go any further. I've got the second sheet of paper on. You can see it's all nice and smooth and flat. So what I do now is I unhook this and I just move it down a little bit. So perhaps onto that peg, 
and then <laughs> lift that over the top and then I can move this back down again but I've still got the tension on the warp so I'll take out the next choke tie and I'll keep winding onto the back roller adding more sheets of paper um, until I get to the end I've got the loom folded now so you can see the back is up and I've started to thread the heddle so what I do is okay I've done the first here so you can see they're all in um, it doesn't matter which way I take the pair And I pull one out and then thread it back into the adjacent hole. Doesn't really matter which way you go, as long as you go in the same direction. So I usually start from the middle and work my way out to the sides, and then I'll be tying them over the front stick. I know a lot of people do leashing, but I prefer knots. Um, I'll take a photo of this as well. I'm all tied on, nice small bunches. Um, all parallel so it doesn't go in or out at the edges there's a bit more on threading and tying in a video that I did a while ago called quick threading so that is a bit more detail on that and I've weighed all the warp yarns that are left written them on my project sheet so this warp weighs 320 grams I'm pleased about that and the next thing is to weave the header to close up the gaps. Now that's why I only do small bunches. These are no more than an inch, these bunches, because if you do great big bunches, then you have massive gaps in between and it takes much longer to close them. You can either use the cardboard strips that come with your loom, but I might keep those for later. I like using some spare yarn. So I've wound, and I always do it in a figure of eight on my shuttle. Um, some cream cotton that was a spare bit, just enough to close the gaps up and see how the tension's working. Every so often, because it's been wound on with paper, the tension will go quite loose. So either from the front or the back, I'll wind that up a bit. I've just wound a little of each of the two weft yarns on my shuttles just to try them out. I don't know if you can see, I wind in a figure of eight around the sides. When this one side gets full, I'll turn it over, wind it around the other side. But for the moment, I've just got enough on there to try a little bit. Um, I've got a great assort assortment of shuttles. This is the one that came with the loom. These were made by a couple... I think they're really lovely. I've also got shuttles from friends who are no longer with us, uh, which is a lovely way of remembering them when I'm weaving. And as you can see, just a few rows has closed up all those gaps. How many have we got there? One, two, three, four, seven or eight rows. That's why I only tie in small groups, because the gaps have completely disappeared. I'm already <laughs> liking, liking the look of this. I think this is going to be nice and it's going to weave really quickly. I'll do a little bit of each so we can see what they look like. <laughs> well, that's interesting. You can hardly see any difference between these two. So these were the two I was using. This one's 100% cotton. This one's got some polyester in it. And you see it's got these slightly bobbly bits. So it doesn't look much different. But this bobbly one, that's this one here, has got a bit of texture to it. That actually might be quite nice for a hand towel. <laughs> I'm not going to mix them though because one is 100% cotton and one is 70% cotton and 30% polyester. And they might shrink differently. So I'd have wobbly edges. 
um, I might weave two tails with one and two with the other. Doesn't really matter. But I'm not going to cut this off. I'm going to keep this. I find it really useful to keep these little first bits. That's why I always put a few extra inches on. And I can always make it in something if I want to, a pencil case or something. It looks very slightly different, but not enough to worry about. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's any help or not. I did tighten the tension up a couple of times. As I said, it goes a bit soggy to start with. And then it sorts itself out after a little while. I'm really pleased. You can actually see from a distance. This one here is slightly lighter. This one here is slightly beige, if that makes any sense at all. Right, I'm going to get on with these. And then, as I said, when I get to the end, um, because all the warps are crossed over at the back, to make the last bit of weaving a bit easier, I put a stick in the open shed to separate them. But I'll show you that once I've done it. Um, thank you very much. For those of you who comment on my videos, it's much appreciated. I know it takes time, but it's nice to know that it's useful to somebody. I do try and answer any questions that come in. Um, I put at the end links to my Etsy shop for the sewing patterns and Facebook and Instagram. So you can always get in touch with me. Um, obviously, most of the weaving I do for this is for clothing, but I just fancy doing these for a change. <laughs> Anyhow, have a great day. Bye now.